Hi again. Same thing happened as yesterday. I got cut off, so we'll start again. So the word for today to start that came to me as I was waking is careful. And I'm going to tie that into the cards that popped out of the deck today. There were three, actually. And so, as I started to say in the previous video, when we think of the word careful, we often think of the word cautious, like be careful. And when, I, when this word came to me this morning, it was really of a different quality. It was the quality of being filled with care, to be careful, to be full of care. And so I sat with that in my meditation this morning. I did two meditations already this morning. So hi, hi Sa, welcome. So my first meditation was on this word careful, to feel full of care, as opposed to being cautious and careful and, and paranoid or worried or, or on guard. So to be full of care, careful. And then uh, later after I did my yoga and woke up and did my little morning things, I pulled three cards. Well, three cards jumped out of the deck. So, uh, so those three cards are what I want to talk about now and weave them into this thread with the, the, the quality of being full of care. So let me bring these out in the order they came. So I'm going to show you them and then we'll talk about them. So here's the three cards that came out of the deck. The Rebel, also called the Emperor in uh, traditional tarot. So here he is, this rebel full of fire and vim and vigor and ready to break the chains of his old conditioning and create something new. And then the next one, and this, the, the order is important. We got this one the other day, sorrow. Sorrow held in the mind, which can also be regret for mistakes, mistakes made. And then the final one is innocence. And you'll notice that innocence is an image of a master. And these are all male images, but uh, let's go to more of the gender neutral or archetype. Although traditionally this is a very masculine card. So this, and, and how does all this relate to being careful, to be full of care? So the rebel, the rebel can, uh, when, when we are inspired with a great idea, or we feel that sense of rebellion, like we are going to rebel against the system that doesn't work or the rules or the regulations or whatever. We can really sometimes not be careful and ride roughshod over others. Hey, welcome Liz. Welcome Maria. And so I really, I had been ruminating about my teenage years and hopefully some of you, probably some of you will recognize this the rebellious teenager. And those of us who are indigo warriors who came here with the indigo auric field to break down the old system in order to create something new, we came with a rebellious energy. We are the ones born in the 60s and 70s of that quality of rebelliousness, some even born in the 80s. And um, so what happens in that rebelliousness is that we ride roughshod over others, um, our parents when we're teenagers, and can sometimes cause a lot of grief. But it's in our nature to rebel and to not obey rules and systems and, and um, arbitrary beliefs that we don't believe in, that we know do not serve even if we didn't understand why. So that quality of rebelliousness wants to break down old structures that no longer serve in order to make way for new structures. The challenge is to do that in a care-filled way. But the nature of a rebel is to throw caution to the wind. We don't want to be careful. We want to break away from what was too constraining. And in that process, especially when we're young, before we have the wisdom of the elder 
to be careful, to be full of care, we can hurt others in the process. And that will lead, of course, to the sorrow. The sorrow in the mind held for the regrets for the harm we've done others. And that leads, of course, to the final card. Because if we just stay in sorrow, we get stuck there and we serve nothing and no one. Do we sometimes need to make amends? Absolutely. Do we sometimes need to apologize for our, the harm done? Yes. Sometimes is it too late to apologize? Yes. Does that mean that we can't make amends? No, <laughs> we can make amends. That's the inner work. That's the piece of the inside work where we honor and recognize the sorrow and we make amends through apology and prayer and forgiveness practice. Whether we do that face to face with the, those we've harmed or not isn't as much of the issue as it is that we do that inner work, that we take 100% personal responsibility for everything we've done and not done that has caused harm to ourselves and others and that has created the reality we are personally experiencing in this now. So if you have people who are angry with you because of things you've done in the past and you feel regret over it, by all means, apologize, take responsibility. But should you be beating yourself up for that behavior? No, not at all. Apology and forgiveness, that's right, Sa, that's what's required for us to move forward. Now, that being said, if someone else is coming to you and bemoaning their suffering because of your behavior, it's perfectly okay to take responsibility for your part. However, they are the creators of their reality. And if they are choosing to beat you up for their misery, that is not okay. That's when we have to be full of care for ourselves and say no I love you I'm sorry please forgive me I forgive you and then let it go and set your boundaries because setting boundaries is also being care filled for yourself so ultimately the goal here is to honor that that rebel within us Many of us here, many of the people that I speak with who, who resonate with my message are the indigo warriors who came to break down the old system and start calling out and announcing, hey, hello, this system doesn't work. The leaders in charge are not out for your best interest. In fact, the opposite is true. And the establishments and institutions that are supposed to help you are actually hurting you. And when you start announcing like that, people don't like to hear it. <laughs> and they will blame you and they will get mad at you. And yet inside of us, our soul is calling to be that rebel warrior, to break down those systems, to say we need something new to come. However, if we get stuck in our older years, in our 40s, 50s, 60s, in this state of sorrow, and we don't move forward and forgive ourselves and forgive others and do our shadow work so that we can clear and heal those old um, patterns in our subconscious minds, then we never get to what we really came here to get to, which is the innocence. So any of you who have met with indigo, I mean, not indigo, excuse me, the next um, sort of the next uh, lay, uh, level of children who are coming in, the crystals and the rainbow children, you may have encountered the wise child, the wise eternal soul that's a newborn or a young one that is innocent and yet is so wise. Or perhaps you've met an elder master who has returned to innocence 
who has remembered and reclaimed that playful, innocent youth that's not just the youth of the rebel, but is the youth of innocence, the connection with the divine child within. And that's what we are returning to. That's why many of us came in to bust the old system because we need to make way for a new way of being on the planet, one that is in harmony with all of nature, one that trusts with innocence like a child. And so I love this, this series here, this series of rebel to the process of the shadow work of clearing the sorrow for ourselves and other generations so that we can all, as a planetary family, return to a level of innocence and trust and harmony. And of course, in this state, the state of the true master, we are care-filled for all life. We recognize our unity with all things. We recognize that Mother Nature, Mother Gaia, is our mother, and so we care for her, full of love and care in our hearts. So, hmm, I'm curious what you all feel, how this resonates with you, and I would love to hear from you how this concept of careful as cautious and suspicious paranoid danger protection versus care filled resonates with you and i'd also love to know about your journey have you resonated with have you connected with this rebel energy in your life have you connected with this sense of sorrow and grief for behaviors that maybe you regret now or um, um, are you feeling that sorrow and grief from other people in your family? And where in your life is this innocent showing up and are you calling for it? Do you need it or is it present for you? Please do share a relevant comment. I would love to know how you relate to this theme and the theme of careful. And as always, I, I, uh, I wish you bright blessings again from this um, New Year's Eve here in, in Bali. And uh, I ask that you, you share a comment, share uh, your thoughts, because when you do, it, it encourages the, the algorithms in Facebook to share this wider, this message wider. And if you've ever had that moment where you are down in the dumps or challenged and something comes through your newsfeed that just is that right thing in that right moment, that's because the algorithms put it there through magic serendipity and math. <laughs> so when you share relevant comments here, you allow this to be spread further and wider and perhaps this message will show up at the right time, in the right place, for the right person who needs it. So I ask for your help in that share. And I also ask that you uh, visit my website if you like what I'm saying, if you relate to the way that I'm delivering information. I'll share the link above as I do every day once I publish. Um, I have many ways that I work with people and uh, so I would love to connect with you if that feels like uh, something that's right for you. So let me just tune in for a moment here and see if there's anything else that needs to be shared right now. Um, no, just have a beautiful day. I wish you bright blessings wherever you are in the world from beautiful Bali on this early morning with much love. May your day be filled with care. Mwah.